So welcome to another video in the series about Git uh, integration in the IntelliJ IDEA IDEs. Uh, I'm Gary Hawkin, I'm the developer advocate for PHP Storm, and with me as usual is Trisha, developer advocate for IntelliJ. How are you doing, Trish? I'm all right, how are you? Yes, not too bad at all. Um, so this is something I'm ashamed to admit has confused me in Git for, for a while. So today we're gonna talk about merging and rebasing and when each of these is appropriate and how to do them easily in the ID. Am I right? That's right, yeah. We're not going to look at this. So this is our, one of our most frequently asked questions. How do you merge inside the IDE? And um, when do I merge? When do I rebase? There's also a lot of questions around dealing with conflicts, but I don't want to look at conflicts um, this time around because that's quite a big topic in its own right. I agree. Yeah, so today we're, we're just going to look at the, pro the process of merging and the process of rebasing and when either of those tools are appropriate if I'm understanding it correctly. Yeah, that's right. Cool. So if we look at my screen here, um, I hope it's fairly clear. As usual, we're looking at my favorite part of, uh, of IntelliJ IDEA's Git integration, which is the log part of the version control window. So often in version control, we end up in the sort of local changes bit, but the, the log window is, bit, is the bit where we can sort of see what's really happening in our, our, in our Git structure, if you like. Um, so what I've got is I have, um, I've got a number of branches here, but this is sort of my main development branch. Uh, it's called development actually, but you can see there's a number of branches here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to merge in a, a branch which has a couple of commits on it with some changes that I'm really hoping don't, uh, don't cause any conflicts. <laughs> Um, and then hopefully when we've done that, we can see what what the process is for merging, but also what um, what the outcome is of merging, um, let's say, a feature branch into a, a main development branch. All right, there's a, Ooh, few, yeah. there's a few different ways of doing this. I find the whole thing a little bit confusing as well. Like, I'm definitely no expert on this um, because it's quite difficult to get in your head, like, which thing is merging onto what? And which direction are you kind of going? So can I interrupt quickly, um, just to confirm, uh, th because I just want to tell, you know, say how I work and maybe I'm right or wrong, but would you then um, have the develop branch want to start working on a new feature that um, maybe is experimental or maybe you're not 100% sure when you're going to finish it, so you may be leaving the project in a non-building status, so you'd branch to work on that, and then when that piece of work is either completed or you're happy that it's going to work and you want to pull it back into your development branch you'd merge it yeah and it's, it's going to depend a bit on the team and on on what your what your own process okay. is like so when I'm doing stuff personally on my own stuff I tend to use branches for experimental stuff but I often don't merge those back in because they're too experimental I'll quite often start a new branch with a nice clean like solution um, or, or do it straight onto the development branch but yes branching is quite often used for uh, if more than one developer is working on a number of uh, on, on features, let's say, so this yellow thing shows where we are, um, different people could have branched off different points of the, of the main development branch, and they're going to work on some stuff, commit two or three or more commits, and then merge that back into the main development branch so other people can see those changes. And uh, yeah, one of the, one of the sort of, mm, one of the ways, one of the uh, <laughs> one of the ways of working is feature branching. So you literally just start a branch for a new feature, um, and then when that feature is completed, then you merge that into the the development or the release branch. But there's loads of different reasons for doing branching. Like you said, you might do it for experimental stuff, or um, not to trample all over someone else's code, or or whatever. But I think feature branching is is one of the clean uses of of branches in Git. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this branch to merge and I want to merge it into um, this position here, which I'm going to merge it onto uh, my development branch. Okay. Uh, and there's a few, di few different ways of doing that. So I can right click on there and I can select the branch name and I can merge. Now, to me, it's not super clear like which branch is being merged onto where. So I tend to prefer using the VCS menu. I go to Git. I go to Merge Changes. 
And then I get a bit of a clearer idea of, of what's going where. So I, my current branch is development. So that is the branch I want to merge onto. Uh, okay. Right? And yeah. the branch I want to merge is called branch to merge. Okay? And then that's a you bit clearer. This, yep. Right, exactly. I thought I'd, I'd be clear about this. Um, so I tend to prefer this window because it's a bit clearer to me what's going on to where, and I can double check everything. I also use it for squash commits. And squash commits are super useful if, as you said, you're working on maybe a branch where there's a lot of stuff which, which didn't compile halfway through, and maybe you just want a nice clean commit with all of the working stuff. But squash commits is a is an entirely different process, which I'm, I'm not going to look at. So we're just going to do a straightforward merge. Now, we'll press merge. It tells me what's happened. If I go back to my log, I'll get a visual. So you'll see that the development was here at start point, And now it's moved on. And it includes the two commits that were on branch to merge. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a very nice visual, actually. Yeah, and, and one of the things I like about this is that you get this um, this nice mergey, you know, representation. We had we had two branches which were going on in parallel that weren't interacting with each other, but now those two branches are are one branch, okay? And we're all yeah, on cool. And it's development. nice to see because you can see the branch to rebase has split off, where it's split off from and the fact that hasn't been merged. So I don't use this log uh, window enough, I don't think. As as a, I, I'm a very visual person, so I find this really useful because I can see, as you say, branch to rebase is kind of dangling off the side. It it was split off over here. It's um it hasn't been merged and it's got one commit on it. But these two branches, you can see that they're independent bits of work which have come together um at this commit here, and and I find nice. that really yeah. useful. And what this means now, actually, this branch to merge, I don't need that anymore. So I can actually say, delete branch to merge. OK, because it's just I don't need that name. I don't need to go back to it. It's it's here in the yep. history, but it's not important to yeah, manage I know that what you mean. So It'll that's be, merging. You, you, otherwise, otherwise, like me, you'll end up with a list of about 100 branches, which are like a year old that you never use anymore, which is just annoying for everyone. So every time I go back to um, a, an open source project I've been working on, I usually end up spending about half an hour just pruning branches because I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what these are. I should just get rid of them. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So that's merging. And I think one of the key things here, as you saw, there was no conflicts for a start. So that was, that was nice and easy. If there had been conflicts, we would get a diff view, which allows us to resolve those conflicts. But here, what happened was the changes which happened on the development branch and the changes which happened on the branch to merge branch were completely independent. There were no conflicts and they come together nice and easily. And what we see here is where we've used merge rather than rebase is we see these two independent branches going on and then merging together at the top. Okay? Nice. So, let me show you rebase. I um, People who've used Subversion or other um, source control tools which tend to work on a single branch, you can't really call it a branch if it's like a single branch. If you're working on a single trunk, you're used to working on a single trunk and everyone commits to that, People tend to like to use rebase when they move to Git so that in the end their history looks like a series of commits on a single trunk of development. Okay. Okay, so yeah. you, you'll find that people who are used to working in that particular way tend to prefer you to rebase, but rebase is or can be a destructive operation. So it's a little bit more risky. Uh, merging, you saw that was kind of fairly straightforward, and you can also see the history of the two branches going on together. Some people don't like this. They think it's kind of messy that you have these two branches at the same time. But um, yep. some people like it because it's very visual as to what's happening. So let me show you rebase. The, this branch, the branch to rebase, was started back here at this commit, and then some other commits happened onto it. And what I want to do with rebase is if I merged it, it would end up merging sort of somewhere at the top here, and we would see another yep. curvy little branch. But what I'm, I'm, I don't want to do that. To rebase it, I'm literally going to move this so that the commit kind of happens after this commit, um, which kind yep. of doesn't really make loads of sense. But hopefully, when I've done the rebase, you'll be able to see what I mean. Uh, so bear in mind that this I, branch... I understand, yeah. Bearing in mind that this branch 
started here where we've got this tag which says user service. So that's kind of where that branch was, where it originated from. So again, I'm going to use the git menu here. Uh, so again, the, there is, um, if we look at this branch here, there is a rebase onto, and you can use that option. But uh, again, I just tend to prefer to use the more verbose version. So, uh, I can't find rebase now. There we go, rebase. Okay, cool. So, so that's, I'm on development. So I don't want to be here. I don't want to rebase development onto anything. I want to rebase branch to rebase onto development. And this is for me. Right. Okay. This is the thing that's most confusing about rebasing the onto bit. So which direction do things work in? Like I'm going to rebase my my branch, my very branchy branch. I want to rebase that onto my main thing. Yeah. So. Okay. I guess you're pushing the changes onto the development branch rather than the other way around. Right. I think that makes sense to me. Cool. So I'm actually I'm going to check out branch to rebase. You don't have to do this. It's just that this is the way that I keep things straight in my brain. <laughs> so I'm going to... Yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'm going to check out the branch that I, that I want to rebase. I go to Git. I go to rebase. Now you can see I'm on branch to rebase. I want to yeah, rebase okay. it onto uh, development. That's this one here. Yeah. And, um, and there's a bunch of other options here, but again, I'm not going to do that. So if I rebase that, and it's just doing its thing, you can, if you want to, there are more advanced things you can do. If there are a bunch of commits in here, you could skip or squash or reword some of the commits. Uh, normally, I don't do any of that. I had to do some skips a little while back because uh, some of the commits were not, weren't compiling. Um, Mm, but okay. I, I really don't recommend doing that because things start to get messy very quickly and you, you want your code to always be compiling and you want your history to be coherent. So I would just go pick for everything and just just go for it. Now look, my branch to rebase comes after development. So it's, it's almost like what you've done is, and in this instance, the branch that you were rebasing um, from had only one commit in it, which is using Reactor. But it's almost like you play those commits onto the branch in the order they were committed on the branch you're rebase, rebasing from. Exactly. If that makes sense. So basically, you've kind of moved the, the root of this branch from here. You move the root yeah. all the way up here. Now, again, th we didn't have any conflicts, but this could, this could cause quite a lot of conflicts because the start point for this branch is now entirely different. And if you've changed any of the files... Um, so this contains uh, some changes to mood service, right? So if mood service had been changed in any of these commits, yeah. then I need to, when I rebase, I need to be aware that the start point for mood service is entirely different to the original start point. So that's when rebasing gets really messy because you, you basically have to do, um, you have to deal with the conflicts for every single one of the commits not just for a single yeah. merge commit. So you have to think about the fact the start point and the diffs are going to be completely different for every one of the commits in that branch that you've rebased. The, the big problems I've always had with rebasing is to think of that in my mind because there's times where I've had a conflict in an earlier commit in a branch that's not a conflict in a later commit in that branch. But when you rebase, because it plays each of those commits out, then... <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to resolve the conflict, even though you know that the conflict's resolved in a later commit. If that absolutely, that, yeah. that confuses me constantly. Like you've you've resolved a commit, let's say in in you've resolved a conflict in one of the early commits in your branch, and you keep having to re-resolve the same conflict. You're like, I I don't understand. I, I thought I'd done this, but <laughs> but like you say, wonderful. You, you, like you say, you're replaying every single one of those commits onto a onto a new route onto the new branch, and and it's quite it can be quite messy, and it can mean potentially. If you do, if you resolve your conflicts incorrectly, those commits that might have compiled in the past might not now compile in um, yeah. on the rebased version. So rebasing, I think, is is really quite risky. And if you've got multiple commits, it gets it can get very messy. 
Yep, wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Trisha. As usual, you helped me to understand stuff. Um, doing these videos is always a lot of fun because I learn as much as everyone else, I think. So thank you very much. Um, we'll definitely keep doing some more of these. I know that it's there's been a bit of a break between some of them. Um, our travel schedules, unfortunately, haven't lined up until now. Uh, but yeah, hopefully we can keep this going. So let us know what you think and let us know if there's any topics you'd like us to cover. I suspect we've been avoiding um, conflicts for a while, Tricia. I don't think we can avoid it for much longer, unfortunately, but it's fine. Yep. I think conflicts is probably high high priority to deal with. Wonderful. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye.